Hi and welcome to Tykes TV. I've got Tom on again. So Tom, glad that you can join me uh, today, mate. Good to be back. Plenty going on. Plenty going on. Yeah, lot to get uh, his teeth into kind of thing. So uh, we'll start off with official uh, media conference that went off with Gene Crine and uh, Khalid Wavir and that. And what we're talking about, it's like transpired and what happened a couple of days after. So... Um, I was talking to Ian from Tykes Blog yesterday and he did a good article uh, and he seems to like think as well as that the board seem more uh, united as a united front, a bit more settled on board. Is that impression that you'll get, Tom? I think so. I think that we've got um, we've got quite a few we've got quite a few in there now hmm. who are um, who all seem to be saying the same things and I don't think we've had that, have we? We've had hmm. We've we've not had anything said. So to see four, five, six different people who were obviously influential now all saying the same things and go back in the same line. Um, sometimes you've got to back the same line, even if you're not on board with it. Do you know mm. what I mean? Mm. And and there, I think I think they are on board with it. But I think also they've 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 made they've made a point of this is what we want to do. This is where we're going. This is what's happening. Um, and the They've all come out with, with particularly. I, I like that interview with uh, Julianne Key. I like that because I think she. Um, it, it would. There was no content in it mm. whatsoever. It was just positive, though. Mm. There, were no, there were nothing that made you think. Oh right, well we started it, we cracked it. But it was just positive, and I like that. I like the fact that it's positive, and I like the fact that we seem to be shifting momentum. Yeah, I mean, it's, there were some like questions getting asked by, I think it was Radio Sheffield and uh, Port, at York's Post and that. And one, what really got me and like got to me a lot was when a question got asked to Jean Crying and she was like in tears. And I think we were like just their boredom and discontent. And you could tell that she was visibly upset and understandably so after what Patrick had done. And to see someone like that on board that actually, you know, wanted to be moving in the right direction because. Before it was like so distant, and now with Nareef coming out and saying things, Julianne, uh, Jean, Khalid, I think there's a more a more purpose to it, a more direction on this is where we want to go. Was before it was sent to be like a fate and losing battle. I got that impression with Nareef at that uh, at meeting of a week, to be fair, Tom, that there was, he wanted to move things forward, but basically we're just getting shoved to one side and. Conway and Lee were just going their own direction, their own way a, 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 a lot of the time. I think there'll have been a lot of heartache for uh, Gene Crane. I think mm. there'll have been a lot of heartache. I think there'll have been a lot of um, qu questioning things in her mind, questioning whether she should get involved a little bit more or step back a little bit more or mm. she wants to do best for the club, clearly. Um, and she's reluctant She's reluctant to be involved, but she kind of feels a duty to do it. Mm. Um and I think watching, if you looked at the end of last season and you look at the, the some of the um, attendances that we had, um, the one for the one that that completely blew my mind was when we took. I said to you, there four hundred and fifty, I think it was, to Huddersfield. Yeah. And I'm sat, I, I'm I'm still looking around at away end and thinking, this is not right. This, we, we, this could be the game where we get relegated and we've got four hundred and fifty for here. And mm. that's not they don't want to come. It's because they know. They knew how it was going and they knew what were happening and they'd, they'd seen so much and there's only so much they could take. And I think Jean Grant got to the point where there's probably only so much she could take. Mm. Um, and I would be really interested to see what the conversation was when they're on about the board. But they've obviously said, what can we do? What can yeah. we do now? Um, and do you know what? I was emotional watching it because I, I, knew, I knew what it meant to her, but I also knew that the... It's it. There'd be a lot of heartbreak involved. There'd be a lot of, um, and seeing and she she would, I think she I think the thing that drives her probably and I'm I'm not I'm ta not talking for her but I would imagine that it's that, um, she feels that responsibility, mm. um, and yeah it was it was emotional it was because yeah. it, we we know what it meant to Patrick Cry we know what it means to that family um, mm. and the fact that she's done it. I, I, I'm and and, and realised what a state we're in and what a state we were in. Hopefully, I'm talking past tense, and I think that show that just shows so much. Um, I I think it was 
it's like what Patrick was as well. He didn't really want to be at limelight. And what I liked about Nareev, what he mentioned on Veer is that he, and he admitted, I'm not going to be be an alt-time kind of thing. But what I am wanting to do is like let the people who are, and I should imagine he's like on about, such as like Gene and James and Khalid and that, people who are actually at the club day in, day out, let them get on with the job. And I'm here if they, if I need it. I'm, I mean, he, he brought up again about £1 million injection so it's not like not going to be a fire a quick fire sale of players and we don't have to be sell a player first before we can get other people in and back and it like questions were getting asked about you know certain players what could be going to miss it over but i think we've all got his own opinions on who could be going and what prices and it, it, you know it's all, all been banded about but it seems to be refreshing to see that it seems to be like in safe hands but it doesn't seem to be like mass panic and we've got to do this we've got to do that and you know, rush. It seems everything seems to be like so steadied, and they're probably like as calm as a swan on top. But the feet must be sent it does underneath, making sure that things are in yeah. place for the season. I think uh, the, <clears> that you look at. Um, I, I've I've almost come, I've changed my view on the on like the manager situation because I was saying that on the last video I was saying that we it would have been good if we could have got him in for got him in for the. Um, press conferences and mm. done that and ge generated a bit of but I th I've come round to the way of thinking that actually we, we it's so important to get this one right mm. that if we rush into it and we say well we're doing this and we want to get things moving we want to get things it's all right getting things moving but it's got to be getting moving in the right right way and and one thing I would say and I'm I'm going to put this out there now Neil mm. is that praise the Lord Paul Cook's not getting it yeah that's all that's all I'd say because I, 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 when I saw his name, that that was the only one in that group that terrified me because I do not for me, not no. for me. I mean, it did, it did all right, you know, earlier on. I think when it when we got him back, but since he's gone on to Chesterfield and stuff, and he's like fallouts with media's and stuff, I'm like, yeah. Mm, yeah, we don't really want that. Well, he had a good, he had a good run with Wigan, but at one point, I, I think it, when they were, when we played them, we drew nil nil. I remember Ben Williams got sent off in that game. Yeah, and they were they weren't they weren't big fans of him then, um, and he had a good run of results. But I think and I, and that's that's when well that's when they wanted to keep him. But not not for me, not for me at all. Here's one for you, then, Tom. You know, in that press conference, were you surprised that Khalid actually came out and said that yeah, we've been talking to Duff and we've been talking to Asselman? I was surprised, my son. I thought when he got answered the question, I thought he wouldn't just turn around and say, yeah, we're still in, in discussions with. You know, for British-based managers and one foreign, I I, I won't expect him to come out and name him. To be fair, I don't know what you thought. I just wonder if he's done that though to say, <clears throat> as, like a statement of intent mm. to say we're on it and we're going mm. for these names and this is what we're doing and we we won't be giving the job to anybody. Um, I wonder if he's. Cause I'll be honest, I I don't. I think the I think the names involved Duff. I would really like because mm. I think. The, the work that he's done if you I, but I would give him a I would give him a decent contract and I'd say buy into what we're going to do now mm. um Jimmy Floyd Asselbank has done a he's an un, he's underrated in my opinion he's done a decent job in in I know he's had a, a bit of a difficult time and then he went back to Burton and he did all that but I I think he would I think he would would be all right depending on um Depending on whether he buys into the into the into the long term, we've got it's got to be a long term appointment. Or it's got to be someone we've who, if it's not long term, we put stuff in place so that it is long term. If they leave, if that makes sense, like, yes, yeah, like a smooth transition into it kind of thing. Um, and then when they're saying about like Warnock and stuff, well, mm -hmm. Warnock only gets a year. That's to me, that's all right. It's if you're gonna if he's gonna have somebody who's gonna take it up after that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You get Devaney involved and you get people like that and learning yeah. from him. But all the people who are... If you've got someone like Warnock in, everybody's learning from him. There's going to be a structure there, isn't there? Yeah, and he's he's not going to do it. He's not going to do it in a unprofessional way. He mm. knows what he's needed. Um, he knows that if somebody's doing a job and we're not getting the most out of him, he knows he'll change it. Mm. Um, but... I, it's got to be. It's this one's got to be right. So I, I'm I'm not actually as surprised as a lot of people from that, because I think he, I think he's trying to say to the board, uh, to, not to the board, to the fans, sorry, um, and to everybody, 
we've got a bit of intent mm. um, and we're going we have interviewed all these people and we will continue to interview these people and maybe a little nudge in the direction of someone like Duff to say well if you don't want it pal don't have it yeah I think that's what uh, that's what I like about it is in I mean I was guilty one of them thinking oh if, if I get a manager in for the early bird kept extending it, it might get a few season tickets sold but then what the more like what you've just said there is that you think about is that the taking due diligence it's like crucial for going for the next round uh, interviews or whatever to narrow it down probably from a top five or i mean i have him i called it ian to, from famous five down to probably between two or three managers and like you said it's now's the time is that if just turn around says well you know i'm not right bothered about it xyz be like, oh, fair enough, then. But this is what we've done as a club. If we, if we've done all as we can as a club to say this is what we aim to do, and we've still said no, we don't want to bother about it. I'm like, right, fair enough. We've got someone like Hasselbank or a Warnock, and for me, a Warnock, and we on this. I know he's retired, you know, he's saying oh, he's retired, but he's still got a soft spot for Barnsley, and I'd think it 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 come in and set standards, he set a, a model up. And if you've got like such as Devaney, Thomas Arben, whoever in background is it in his first team setup, if he's passing on knowledge to them, surely it's a good thing where it can be. I'm here for help, advice, and you, even your players are buying into that. But I think everyone, I think everyone's learning. If Warnock comes, everyone's learning, and yeah. I think even Cali did learn. Yeah, I think about running a club and about about running a. English football club. Good call, that. At, yeah, good at, call. At that level, I think that there's a lot of people who could do with, or I feel like us at the moment need to, we need to be more professional. We need mm. to have a bit more pride. We need to do some of the things that other football clubs are doing that are, aren't even as big as us. Um, that are uh, not quick fixes, but things that you can do well and you can do better. Um, and they talk about again, talk about match the experience, all that kind of stuff. They're, they're not difficult things to sort. They're not difficult things to um, improve. Um, but if you if you get the right person in, it sets the tone. Um, and if they did go for somebody, um, all those names that are on those lists are, are going away from the the way that we've gone already. They're all going away yeah. from the. One. I saw the um, man. United Coach's name mentioned and oh, Eric Ramsey, yeah, hundred percent honest with you. I've got no idea. I've not read up on him. I don't know what he's about, and I don't it's know. Just what... a set piece specialist to someone at Man and he's and he's only like in his thirty, I think. And I'm like, mm, no, this is crucial. Now, I wouldn't mind someone like that being involved in the first team setup. Well, I'm like, do you know what? A short, an attacking coach, you know, to identify it. Mm, I, we're not at the stage where we can be experimenting, though, are we? No, we're not in no. an experimental stage, and that's no. why somebody like Duff or Warnock for me would be the one at the moment from the names. Um, Duff obviously has been at, um, he's done a great job at, at Cheltenham. Mm. He's played, he's had a, he's good on his pro, is what he would be described as in his yeah. playing days, and he's been improving as well, hasn't he? He's been improving, yeah. Um, I, my only worry about that would be how much he wants it. True. If he if he if he really wants it, let's have him. If he doesn't, and if he's got any doubts, let's be moving on. I mean, it's going to be interesting as well because I've seen like Neil Critchley go from Blackpool to Aston Villa. That were a surprise for me. That to be fair, and I'm thinking. Is it going to be Blackpool? I mean, I'm just assuming. I'm I'm assuming here. You know, I'm I'm looking at all angles, but. If Blackpool looking for a manager as well, could they be looking at such as like a Michael Duff and thinking, yeah, he's got a record or a, a national bank? Could it be a two-horse race? I'm thinking, well, it's I suppose it's going to be down to Michael Duff at the end of the day. Who will he seem more attractive? You know, what could he get out of players? Do you think it could force Barnsley into, uh, what can I say, stepping up a bit urgency? But do you think, because I know they said they want to get him before June 13th, I think. So do you think it might like so to Barnsley, right, just like quicken up these, or Barnsley just say, no, we're going to go through this process, what we've been doing? Why rush? Well, it's not it's not unlikely for there to be a couple more managerial changes before hmm. next next couple of weeks. Um, and there is a case for getting business done as as 
as quick as possible. But getting it done as quick as possible still means that you've got to get it right. And it still means that you've got to, it's like when we got get these transfers and you've got, I was looking at, I can't remember which club it was, they were saying, oh, it might have been someone like Crew or something. They'd tied somebody and it says, um, it said in like inverted commas, Crew don't do business early. I was like a bit of mm. a, that's, yeah. the that's what they always say. But that's all well and good, but what is he any good? Have we? Uh, do you know what I mean? Have we? Have mm. it, we've got his business done early, but have we done good business? Have yeah. we done it well? Do you know what I mean? Have we? Have we? Uh, and I swear, well, Dad. So it's like, like I said, via it's like, have we done good business? Have we got a winning manager? Have we got a manager that can improve players? And that's what I'm looking at as well. As whoever's going to be coming in, would I see? You know, we keep saying Eric Ramsey. You know, is a ta- is set piece tactical coach, and that would he improve a player? Hmm. Would you get back through a Michael Duff or a Warnock or a National Bank? I think Michael Duff you would because he's had to work under similar conditions at Cheltenham and he's improved it from playoffs and then getting promoted. Warnock, we all know what Warnock's like on his clubs and what he can get after a player, what you know, what he can pick up and see in a player. Assel Bank, probably the same. Would he want more funds as as with that? I know he's worked at Burton, but he had a bit of a spell at uh, QPR and all. So for me, I'd be going more duff stroke worn up kind of thing because I've we've been kind of managers I'm seeing like not only can they get a standard and style player that they want to know but all being well improved with players what we've come you know what we've got coming through at a minute as well. Yeah and the the players that we've got at the moment there's going to be a it's going to have to be a manager who knows how to complete transfers as well and complete business business and good business because there's going to be a lot of players who are going to be going out. Mm. There's got to be there's players coming back in who have been out on loan. Um, so there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. It's going to have to be somebody who who knows how to who, who knows how to um, what's the word? And they have to. It's going to be a revolving door mm. uh, until whatever time. And they're going to have to deal with different things and different challenges. And and again, who better than Warnock to do with that? Yeah. Is, your, is, your, is your proper wheeler dealer? And are these managers going to have a good say in these transfers? Because they haven't before, have they? Yeah. They got, I know it's been alluded to that before. And, and will they be allowed to actually manage and get the team playing the style they want to play rather than any outside interference, which we all know what people have been saying before. And I think that what Narif said is that he wants the people who are in them jobs to actually do the jobs, you know. And for me, that also includes a manager or a coach doing the looking after the, the team, you know, having a say. I know they said that we're still using this database and uh, manager got an input into it, but I'd like to think that a manager, I mean, could you imagine why or not? If it's a no, it, it means no. If he's going to say yeah, it's going to be yeah. But if someone like a player or a shop, they'd just go along with it. You know, not be as forceful, but I think Warnock would be, you know, where it comes across. But then you could imagine the the publicity and the coverage that Warnock could get for Barnsley. The PR via would be unbelievable because he's a he's a well known name, isn't he? Warnock. You know. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Warnock would would say if someone's going and presenting him with stats and saying this player is a good one one worth to worth to watch, I don't think he'd just say no because he of the mm. stat. But it's like we said about last year. The inflexibility and rigidness of not of not of, of only signing players within that, or and then just the scattered gun approach of what we signed at the start of last season. It didn't yeah. have no. There were no. There were no direction. There were no clue. With there were no. I mean, we still got. We got Obiolari on a three-year contract, hmm. um, and we have got players like Benson had a stinker last year. Absolutely, his season never started. Hmm. Um, so you've got players who were there. You've got players who were there, who have been signed for whatever reason. Warnock would sign players to fit them into a team. He's yeah. not going to be thinking about. He's not going to be thinking about. He's not going to be thinking. Oh well, we need to get him in because he might be able to do this. He'll want to know that they'll be able to fit into that team. Yeah, and that, that, look at the players we've got. You look at how many players we've got who, who we're not even considering. You've got players like Schmidt, Aitchison, mm-hmm. Kane. All those players, those are all players who we've hardly seen anything. I know we've seen we've seen Schmidt, but like Kane and 
and Aitchison and players like that, are they going to fit in? Because they're like new signings. Yeah. That's what I was going to say when you were on about them kind of players is that for them coming back, you know, well, so coming back, but we are coming back to Barnsley. They've been out on loan. It's literally going to be like a new signing. And I'm thinking so like uh, it's a fresh start for them. It's And whether the manager comes in, it's going to be a fresh start to everybody. And it's, it's going to be interesting because at times I thought me last season we had like an unbalanced squad. We seem to be top heavy on attacking players and lackluster in midfield. And someone like, I mean, even a Duff, to be fair, on about one, but I think even a Duff are coming in and, and see where the issues are. You know, if it's rumoured to believe that he likes playing three at back and five in, you know, three, five, two. If he's coming in for that, he's wanting for players to be fitted into that, not be, oh, well, I think you'll be all right up there or here. He wants players to play in that position, not like square if pegs got, around doors, is it? And if you've <clears> got <throat> Duff or Jim Floyd Hasselbank or somebody of that ilk, hmm. They know League Two and League One very well. Mm. So they know the players that um, they'll have players in their mind who, no disrespect to Cheltenham, but we would be a bigger pull as a team that he might have gone for before. Mm. Um, that he might know. They know those leagues really well. The, the, the two of the managers, I, I think that's another reason why they've obviously identified them is because they are two managers who know League One. And they also, Duff knows League Two and knows all those players and knows what, what there is. And there are still some gems and there are some older players who, who would do a decent job. Um, but those two, I think, will have been identified mainly due to that. And obviously because Duff's got rising stock all the time. And that's even more bizarre, that's even more bizarre for me, that one with Critchley, because his, mm. stock, his stock were rising and his stock were... And someone mm. would have... I don't think there'd be many people who would. I, I would have thought if you, you know, if you if your top end championship teams were to, to were to lose the manager or someone go, I would have thought he would have been a name mentioned. But I was really surprised about when I saw that with Critchley. To be fair, because I thought he, he did all right with Blackpool, um, and like I said, he stopped rising, but he were improving. So for me, I never saw that coming. To be fair, and I uh, think but... I think they'll I think they'll struggle this year big mm. time, um, but. I was thinking about them the other day, and I was thinking about where they, where they were as a club. Mm. They were at rock bottom, weren't they? Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think we're at rock bottom. I don't think we're anywhere near rock bottom. But I think that it's a, it it shows what can be done with the, with a shift in momentum, um, and it shows what can be done if you if you get the right people in place and you go about your business. Blackpool have gone about the business fantastically because they've done mm. it under the radar. They've done it. They've got players in that are good players. Um, they've not been flashy. They've not done anything like that. But they've they've got to the championship. Had a great season last season with probably one of the lo- well, definitely one of the lowest budgets. And it just shows what can be done from quite a poor position. They were in a terrible position, really. They yeah, they were. Well. Got in and they had all that, didn't they? Under Oysters about really bad. I think that's a good point to finish it on. To be fair, we, like you said, we're not rock bottom. We're starting to. Have someone uh, commented overnight. I think it was the same, but. It's going to take uh, probably two or three years for uh, for board to get through to fans and fans to please fans, uh, a board kind of thing. But it maybe is. But what I see is that they're making attempts. They've got that first foot up ladder now, board, and they're starting to improve the communication side in it. I mean, could you imagine this time last year when we were asked if all managers would be like, oh, we're still in talks? We've got names of managers coming out. We've got and putting a million pound if they're doing these open forums doing stadium tours. So I think the club now, and I put this down to like Jean Cry because she understands what it needs to community a statement. She's wanting to get out to the fans and this is our intent and it's down to like everybody, not be like disjointed and, you know, political sections arguing and I'm not getting this, I'm not going to a game, but I think everybody's not like starts to see it. Still going to be, you know, it's cautiously optimistic you know, Julian Quay are all positive and Mr. Other. But we always like to say, Tom, actions louder than words, don't we? Oh, I, well, I think that as well, you're in a situation, we're in a situation now where we've got past, or a lot of people, I would hope, have got past the anger stage and got past the feeling that the ones that felt a bit of apathy and the ones who were feeling the end of last season, the end of last season were torture. Hmm. Uh, and now, I, I just I can I can feel it 
moving in the right direction. We do need to be realistic. We do need to be cautiously optimistic. I think we've got a, a great way of putting it, but we do need to get behind it. I think, and I, I think we all, like I said, got to move forward, and we've got to we've we've got to now be looking to support and and, and yeah. get behind. And and it might there's no point hanging on to end of last season now. That's gone. That's mm -hmm. done. Um, that that's t to me. We move on from that. We try and move things forward. We give them the best opportunity for them to achieve. Um, because by by pulling together and by being behind it and giving them a chance, uh, we're giving it best possible chance. And like I said, we've got to stay positive, be positive, because yeah. there are going to be bumps in the road. Um, but we've we've we're starting on the upward curve. I feel. Yeah, long overdue and long may it continue. We're starting and we can see uh, light, the light's getting bigger and bigger at the end of this tunnel and we're just starting with it like now on, on journey. Uh, so, Tom, thanks for joining me. I really have appreciated it. Uh, people that have been watching, leave your comments below. Uh, you know, Neil Warnock, Michael Duff, like, subscribe and share. It's all about opinions and uh, views. Uh, some people might agree, disagree. It's always about, you know, keeping it uh, respectful. Uh, it's all about opinions. Everybody's got different views and outlooks on, on what's happening at the club. Uh, appreciate you all for watching. So, Tom, yeah, once again, thanks for joining me, mate. Really appreciated it. Cheers, man. You Reds. Cheers, that's all. You Reds.